Romance on the High Seas, a 1948 film, sails into the classic era with a blend of humor, surprises, and poignant moments. As we dive into this cinematic journey, be prepared for a mix of funny, shocking, and sad facts that unfold on the high seas. What enduring qualities make this movie an everlasting symbol of the industry? Is there a particular scene that left a lasting impact on you? Now, let's explore your cherished memories and personal experiences related to this cinematic gem. Share your stories and thoughts in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. Stay tuned for more insights, and most importantly, enjoy the voyage through romance on the high seas. Romance on the High Seas, released in 1948, had a profound impact on the world of cinema, shaping the trajectory of romantic comedies. Directed by Michael Curtis, it marked Doris Day's cinematic debut, showcasing her remarkable talent and captivating audiences with a charismatic performance. The movie's legacy lies in its innovative narrative, seamlessly blending romance, comedy, and musical elements. As a pioneering work, it set a standard for future romantic comedies, influencing the genre for years to come. Navigating the high seas of storytelling with finesse, it introduced a fresh take on romance that resonated with audiences of its time. The enduring relevance of this film can be attributed to its timeless themes of love, mistaken identity, and adventure. Its ability to transcend its era, appealing to universal emotions and experiences, speaks to its enduring charm. The delightful combination of humor, romance, and catchy musical numbers has cemented its place in the hearts of viewers, ensuring continued relevance across generations. Doris Day's magnetic presence and the movie's overall craftsmanship have contributed to its lasting impact. Its legacy endures not only as a piece of cinematic history, but also as a source of inspiration for filmmakers exploring the intricacies of love and laughter. Its influence can be seen in subsequent romantic comedies that have drawn from its playbook, showcasing the enduring nature of its storytelling prowess. In conclusion, this cinematic gem remains cherished for its timeless appeal, innovative narrative, and the introduction of a star whose brilliance would continue to shine in the years to come. Its impact on the romantic comedy genre is indelible, making it an essential part of the cinematic landscape. Doris Day and Jack Carson, co-stars of the film, briefly dated during the production of Romance on the High Seas. The movie, released in 1948, marked the beginning of their connection. Following Doris Day's passing in May 2019, Janice Page remains the last surviving member of the cast. Page, younger than Day by five months, stands as a connection to the film's past. Warner Brothers initially sought Judy Garland for the role of Georgia Garrett, but MGM's policy prevented her loan out. Mary Martin was also considered, but eventually Betty Hutton was secured from Paramount. However, Hutton had to withdraw due to pregnancy before filming commenced. These snippets provide a glimpse into the personal dynamics and casting challenges faced during the creation of Romance on the High Seas. In her 1975 autobiography, Doris Day, Her Own Story, co-written with A.E. Hotchner, Doris Day shared an interesting anecdote about how she landed the role in the film. At a show business party the night before her planned departure to New York City, lyric writer Sammy Kahn suggested to Day that she would be a perfect fit for the Kahn Jules Stein score of the upcoming film. Encouraged by Khan, they performed Embraceable You, catching the attention of director Michael Curtis, who then invited her to test for the role of Georgia Garrett. Despite having fourth billing in her screen debut, the audience's immediate and strong reaction led Warner Brothers to sign Day to a seven-year contract. She went on to appear in numerous films, becoming a top ten box office star. In the film review, Variety described Day as a charming and talented newcomer, stating, Miss Day is a winner any way you look at her. This marked the beginning of her successful career in the film industry. In Romance on the High Seas, a recurring comedic element revolves around Mrs. Elvera Kent's notably dreadful singing voice. Ironically, Jenny's page, who portrayed Mrs. Kent was a musical star in films and later took the lead in The Pajama Game on Broadway, a role later assumed by Doris Day in the 1957 film adaptation. The film's director, Michael Curtis, facing financial obligations, established his own production company due to owing $350,000 in back taxes. When Betty Hutton withdrew from the project, Jules Stein proposed Doris Day, unaware of her prior rejection after a failed screen test. 
Producer Henry Blank, convinced by a more successful second test, compelled Curtis to accept Day, averting the threat of Stein using her in another film. During the early stages of production, Doris Day, upon seeing herself in the dailies, felt embarrassed by her performance. When she sought guidance from Curtis about hiring a drama coach, he insisted, No, no, you're a natural just as you are. If you learn how to act, you'll ruin everything. These behind-the-scenes dynamics shed light on the challenges faced in casting and the unexpected turns that led to Doris Day's pivotal role in the film, marking the beginning of her successful career in the industry. The film, with its intriguing casting anecdotes, continues to be a notable chapter in the history of classic cinema, showcasing the unpredictability of Hollywood decisions. In her debut film, Doris Day not only kickstarted her successful acting career, but also delivered one of her biggest hits, the Oscar nominated its magic. The film showcased Day's naivety about movie making as she walked onto the soundstage, expecting a cruise ship for scenes that were actually set aboard one. Featuring Day's singles I'm In Love, Put Them In A Box, and the standout hit It's Magic, the film solidified Day's position as a box office draw. The songs were released as singles, with It's Magic becoming the most successful. Marking Day's first acting role, the movie contributed not just to her acting career, but also to her music success. The crew's laughter on the first day, as Day expected a real cruise ship, highlighted her initial innocence about the filmmaking process. In retrospect, the film not only set the stage for Doris Day's enduring career, but also left an indelible mark with the timeless charm of its magic. A cinematic beginning that led to a remarkable journey. In the late 1940s, Jack Carson and Doris Day embarked on the first of their three cinematic collaborations, marking the beginning of Day's acting journey. During this period, Day and Carson were romantically involved. Interestingly, the film initially bore the title Romance on the High Seas. In her autobiography, Day recalled a pivotal moment during her screen test for the movie. Director Michael Curtis initially directed her to emulate the energetic style of Betty Hutton while performing A Rainy Night in Rio. However, Day, preferring her more composed approach, requested to showcase the song in her natural manner. This film not only kickstarted Doris Day's acting career, but also laid the foundation for her successful partnership with Jack Carson. The dating dynamics between Day and Carson added an intriguing layer to the behind-the-scenes narrative, offering a glimpse into the personal dynamics during the making of the film. The transition from the screen test to the final production underscores Day's influence on her portrayal of Georgia Garrett. This marked the beginning of a series of collaborations between Day and Carson, setting the stage for their subsequent films together. In summary, the 1948 film, initially titled Romance on the High Seas, serves as a notable chapter in Doris Day's early career, featuring the commencement of her on-screen partnership with Jack Carson and highlighting the subtle negotiations between Day and director Michael Curtis during the making of the film. These details contribute to the film's historical significance within the context of classic cinema. Romance on the High Seas, a remake of the 1933 film The Keyhole, took the spotlight in 1948. Its British release titled Its Magic resonated with the popularity of the Oscar-nominated song by Jules Stein and Sammy Kahn. The movie trailer featured a brief duet between Doris Day and Janie's Page, both donning matching up swept hairdos. This rendition of the classic film, drawing from its predecessor, showcased the enduring appeal of its music on an international scale. The subtle nod to the British audience with the alternate title reflects the film's strategic approach to diverse markets. Such elements, including the charming duet in the trailer, added layers to the movie's allure, making it a memorable chapter in classic cinema. 